to a place, not a home. We need to return New York City to that experience of being a place, to being a place where people can grow, not just pass the time. Quality councils, I say, provide a technology that can enable that to happen over time. Like, for years, people dreamed of being able to go to the moon. For a while, they were called crazy. But technology changed. And suddenly, it became possible. The president said, we shall do it. And they still didn't know how, but they knew that they could figure out how. In fact, some of the first people that they gave a front office to were the people who said, you can't do it. Those are the ones who said, these are the things that you need to figure out. They didn't think you could do it because technology hadn't been invented. They pointed out where there were still gaps, and those gaps were not being filled. Dr. Drivers is part of the nationwide movement for making these quality councils possible. If you haven't read his article from SPC Inc., I hope you will. We've got additional copies of it. To give you a little background, Dr. Kai is a consulting engineer specializing in quality management and a director of Exergy, a company specializing in the design of advanced high efficiency power production systems. He retired from MIT in 1986 after over 11 years as director of the Center for Advanced Engineering Studies. Before going to MIT, he was a senior vice president for research and engineering for the Xerox Corporation. He served for two years as assistant secretary for science and technology in the U.S. Department of Commerce. He was dean of the Thayer School of Engineering at Dartmouth College. He was on the faculties of the Colleges of Engineering at UCLA and the University of Michigan. He published over 100 papers and two books. He has also published and lectured extensively on topics of social interest, such as the decline of U.S. competitiveness in world trade, the role of decision theory in political decision making, and the role of technology in society. Uh, I, move on. I want to send a special thanks to ASTC for having made it possible for Dr. Tyson to come here from California. So thanks. I'd like to talk to you about quality management in the community. Down I'll do that. I think you can fix me up there. Um, I'll talk about it in uh, three ways. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of this, how it got started and, and, and how it evolved. I'll tell you just a little bit about where it is today. And then I'll talk to you about lessons learned from the approximately 300 places that are in various stages of development. And then I'll try to finish with some thoughts about what you would do in a place like New York where it is quite different. New York is different. And therefore, there is no template that you can follow. You're going to have to pioneer. But I'll try, I'll give you some suggestions concerning how I think you could approach that problem, but then you'll have to do it. Uh, it, it reminds me of a, a, a tour I did in, in Venezuela once. I went down to consult with the PDVSA, the big oil company, you know, they aren't nationalized oil company. And I went toured all their facilities, and at the end, I came and met with the board of directors. And uh, the, the big mahogany room, you know, with a big table, and I had gone to the refineries and the oil wells and the various places and talked to the workers. And every place I went, I'd talk about quality and then I'd ask them, uh, what's the problem here? What does it take? And so I got all their comments on the flip charts and I pasted them all around the walls of this conference room. In many places, the workers were saying, it can't happen because of those birds and the board of directors, they, the things they do, etc. And I had the board there, and I said, I want you to walk around the room and look at those things, and then we'll talk, we'll debate. 
But when you debate with me, I have an advantage over you that you can't possibly overcome. I'm leaving town tomorrow, and you have to stay and do it, okay? So there is a, I, I remember that situation. Let me talk a little bit about the, 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 the background of it. Why do we have interest in community quality councils? Well, it's incredible. First of all, we, we, as you might have noticed, we had an economic decline. It happened for a long time. Very subtle, like a cog in the water, boiling water, slowly boiling. But what you have to keep in mind is the number of people paying taxes, and we've increased the number of people who have to be helped. And that ratio doesn't have to change too much. And so those who are paying become very, very resentful, and those who are getting feel like they're not getting what they should. And they're not aware of this uh, tyranny of the numbers. It doesn't have to change very much before you really feel it. And you don't have to have the press talking too much about people on welfare or relief not doing what they ought to do. You can have maybe 5% of those people doing something terrible, and then everybody goes out and tries to get rid of the other 95%. So it, it, uh, we, we exaggerate. I, I have a lot of experience with the press, and I can tell you my uh, theory. Deep, deep down, journalists are very shallow. Now, we have another problem here. Technology is coming along and changing our lives enormously, and so in the middle of all this, we're having fewer and fewer people available to do the things we need to do. And people are dimly aware of this, but they don't know what to do about it. Okay? And the more we make them aware, the more frustrated they get, because they don't see a way out of that problem. And this is very close to it. Schools have failed to keep up with the challenge. Yesterday I spent the day, I spent Monday and Tuesday at the George Westinghouse Technical Vocational School. And I met with some of the kids that are studying quality management in the school. And one of them said to me, how can I believe I'm being prepared for the future when my textbooks are older than I am? That's, that, that's really, they, they grasp the um, and And, uh, because the time from dropout to jail is less than four years, we have a consequence of this, is this. And because people don't believe that if they try to do something about the students, anything good would happen, they are stymied. You need to break through that. And I'll come right to the end. Managers in local uh, uh, communities, do not know how to manage. Now that's been true for a long time, but it hasn't been so important. Um, and those of you that are in the industry and involved in the quality movement have a very difficult job because if you're not the boss and you don't have the right kind of a boss, you sit there realizing that there's a whole layer of top management that doesn't understand his job. It's very difficult for you to tell them. They don't want to hear. Now, when things get bad enough, they do. And we've had transformations in a number of companies. And the hype and the transformation do not go together. The hype often precedes the transformation. And uh, so that means in an industry, we have a lot of people who also don't know. But in government, it is far times worse because we don't have bankruptcy in government, but it's not so apparent. So uh, I can go to a CEO who is scared, a new CEO who now reads the books and sees, and my God, I'm not young, and I'm too young to retire, and uh, something has to happen, and, and, it, and it's about to happen on my watch. I can get his attention, but in the, in the city, it's much harder. So we need something to do, that, to do something about that. Now, the other side of the coin. I have found, as a result of traveling around the country, that there are tremendous numbers of very well-intentioned, sincere, and dedicated people in the civil service and in various parts of government. Right? It, 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 there are people that are eager to learn and ready to change. We have to figure out how to get to them and help them. 